Many people do eat nuts and throw away the shells, but you will be surprised that nut shells can be used to produce lots of interesting articles as a source of income. As a Cameroonian cultural artist, Ajong T. Raskin, who is the CEO of Art and Craft Production Center in Geme, tells us how he uses his talent of producing articles out of nutshells as a means to fight against African slavery by the whites. As he says, Africans are too dependent on European goods than African-made goods. I am Adjong Taibo Raskin, alias Raskin Arts and Club Production Center, Ngeme Limbe. My major aim of setting up this center was to fight against mental, physical, and economic slavery of Africa. Africa is passing through stress. Africans are spiritually slaves, mentally slaves. Yeah, because uh, we Africans are too dependent on the European. We are too dependent on the white. We import nearly everything, even to pick, but it is wrong. We are supposed to encourage our children in creativity and productivity, such that such minor things like pin, like needle, and thick pick should not be imported from China or from Europe. So we should encourage our children on this production. That's why I decided to portray the richness of Africa in nuts. He now tells us how palm nuts, coconut, tropical nuts, and even Njangsang can be used to make jewelry that are so beautiful. What do we have in front of me? We have uh, palm nuts. These palm nuts are precious nuts, tropical nuts, that I have seen the richness in it and I've decided to start using it for the production of jewelry like this. We also have precious hard nuts like Jansang seeds. This is Jansang. It's a necklace made from Jansang. Like you wow, see, that's the quite medal beautiful. is a palm nut and the Jansang seeds all around. You can see, for me to want to project our Cameroonian image because the whites, they love it too much, a sign on it. It made it has it can stay for the next 500 years for women like this because the shares are very hard. Even to make a hole on it is not easy, it's just like a stone. Yes, here we have uh, coconut shares, well polished and sand with engraved engravement on it. This engravement are uh, done with marble dust, white marble dust. Every piece has a price because they, every piece has a period in which they use to produce one of the knot. Like the calf knot, we have the calf knot like this. You can see the face. This one is the calf knot. And there are some knots like this, which is the calabash. That is not calf. This is the very first vessel that Africa had. And it is also calf. For an experienced cover, we can take that vessel eight hours and to, to polish it to dry can take four hours. It means it's a whole day. Of course, like every other activity, he tells us his challenges in doing this. The COVID-19 issue was announced and all the whites went back and our grass marketing began dropping. So our appeal is for those who can, like you see I, the samples I have here, if somebody can decide to get a market for somebody who wants maybe 10,000 pieces of any metal here, we are ready to train young men to carry out the production. And the challenge I face in doing all of this from when I left school that I focused on, that I had to focus on 
the production of jewelries and which I have actually defended our productivity up to the international level where I represented Cameroon in the Xiao Festival in 2010, selected by the government. The challenges, the packaging. I realized that the Africans love the jewelries that are made by the whites, the chains. And I, I realized also that very few Africans appreciate African work. He equally tells us who are his target clients. The target is everyone. The chiefs, the fronts, the elites, the youths, the women, the whites, and even the blacks. We should learn to consume our homemade goods. So what are you doing for this, your goods to be uh, sold to Cameroonians or out of Cameroon? Well, uh, I always go on competitions like the Xiao Festival where I became the uh, second best trader in Africa, in Central Africa, in 2010, and best trader in 2012. He doesn't only produce articles out of nutshells, but also sings reggae music and write novels, as he tells us. I sing, of course, I play reggae music. I also write poems. I... I write novels like Books of Doom, which is the title of one of my novels, The Long Journey. What motivated me to write The Journey was the fact that there are many things Africans are lacking. We are passing through brainwash education that is making our children to become very lazy and foolish. So I realized that I should write something that will prepare our African children to start productivity. It's not a miracle for Africans to produce engines and to build planes. But it looks like magic for an African to produce a plane. I don't see the magic. So I, I am going to encourage Africans to start encouraging the children in creativity and productivity. We had the opportunity to listen to one of his songs that he titles Sing Song. The world is turning on its axis. There's no time that the world will stand still. Just try to dance a little, let's see. Time waits for no one day. No one waits for time. Also, he tells us how much it costs to hire him. Well, uh, sometimes they give me 50,000. Sometimes they give me 70,000, sometimes 100, sometimes even 25,000. So it depends on? The occasion. Okay. And it depends on how long you are going to stay there. Yeah, how many songs I'm going to sing. Okay, thank you. Like every other musician, he tells us his main challenge in music is sponsorship. My challenge is actually is sponsorship. I have focused all my mentality on creativity, research. So I've not had time to work with them. So I, right now, I don't have money, but I have experience and I have a lot of creativity. He equally tells us how he gets his inspiration as a singer. Sometimes when you are in the farm, maybe cultivating crops and a kind of thinking comes into your head and you kind of overthink about a particular subject, you decide to put it into a melody and that's how the music comes. Sometimes some of the music just comes. Finally, he tells us how it could be a lot easier for him if he has a sponsor. As he says, anyone who spends time in the creative world will definitely have little time to get money. Anyone who spends time in the creative world has little time to get money. And as such, if there is a sponsor who sees his talent and discovers the talent is good and can 
they can they economically reach and generate income, they will put in money and this will get to the market and people will buy it and it will generate some money. We wish that many more Cameroonians will get inspired through his experience so that we can have many more Cameroon made goods rather than always importing from other countries. This is Gaza Media. For this documentary, I have been Gillette Atemkeng.